The mass shooting in Orlando has reignited the gun control debate in Congress. And a day after four gun control proposals were defeated in the U.S. Senate, a group of lawmakers has unveiled a fifth plan, one they call a bipartisan compromise to try and keep firearms out of the hands of terrorists. The new bill would block anyone on the no-fly list or TSA selectee list from instantly being able to purchase a gun. No vote on that plan has been announced yet. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Bedeau here with Kyle Bosch and we're just getting started here with our nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we're following breaking news for you this Wednesday morning. A huge fire in Cheyenne, North Dakota has destroyed a grain elevator there. Fire crews spent all night trying to keep it from spreading to nearby buildings. The fire is still smoldering this morning. Now the Valley today's Christy Larson has been in Cheyenne for several hours now. Christy, I see you've been able to move a little bit closer. What can you tell us about uh, the continuing fight and then the investigation into how this fire started? Yes, well, now we're standing on the west side of this elevator, guys. So now we're actually taking a look at all of that grain that was still left in the main elevator. And you can just see it's tore into pieces. The fire has completely destroyed that main elevator. It's now burning some of that wheat and barley and corn that was still in there. And then their main building, their main office was in front of this on the east side of this structure. So we're just taking a different look at things right now. Things have still been crumbling apart as this fire continues to smolder. But when I talked with the fire chief earlier this morning, he said as soon as they had gotten the call and as soon as they saw those flames shooting out, they knew that there was not very much they could do to save the elevator once it was fully engulfed with those flames. They knew that their next things that they needed to do was keep the other bins from starting on fire. And also across the street, just to the west of it, was a gas station. So they also had to keep the gas station from catching on fire as well. So they had a lot of tasks. They had New Rock for and also they had Carrington fire departments come and help them as well. Unfortunately, one thing that did happen because the wind was coming from the west going to the east, one thing that happened was they did have a farmer's field to the east of it, and so they did have some hay bales that did catch on fire. Those are also still smoldering this morning, but thankfully that farmer did have some people help him move a majority of his bales, so they were able to save some of those. But a lot of cleanups going to be happening today. They said that um, the fire marshal from Bismarck is going to be coming around 8.30 this morning, but as you guys can see, scrap metal just kind of tossed around this area, and I just wanted to show you just how big these pieces are. As you can see, they have a lot of cleanup to do and of course they have to let it kind of all die down first. Not very much room to spread this fire out this morning. So they're going to have to let this kind of taper off on its own and then do all of their cleanup work afterwards. A big project ahead of them, but certainly the best news is that no one was hurt right. uh, in this fire. So Christy Larson reporting live again this morning in Cheyenne, North Dakota. A huge grain elevator there destroyed by an overnight fire. It's now time to get a check of our weather as we start here on this Wednesday morning. Weather and traffic on the ones. We start with meteorologist Lisa Green. Some overnight storms, but now it's a nice blue skies behind you. It's looking really good out there right now in Fargo. We had some rain move through briefly earlier this morning in the FM Metro, and that brought us a little over a tenth of an inch of rain for us here at the station. And there are places still getting some rain out there this morning. So kind of depends on where you are, what kind of weather you're experiencing, and that will be variable throughout the day. Middle part of the valley, we're looking at sunshine. Down in the south, we've got a few rain showers and clouds, and then up to the north, that heavier rain. So a couple of sprinkles moving their way out of the south here this uh, this morning, and then up to the northwest. No more lightning. Well, actually, now we're starting to see a few more lightning strikes in a town or county with the end, the back end of this system kind of intensifying a little bit. North of Devil's Lake as well, a couple of lightning strikes now popping up there. Uh, but otherwise, we're looking at more heavy rain and some gusty winds at times as that passes to the east. 60 51 in Fargo, it's 54 in Grand Forks. It's going to be a little cooler up north today. Southern Valley, a little warmer. That's where we may get a little more sunshine for longer. And we'll see more clouds up to the north throughout the daytime hours there. And that's where the better bet for rain will be. However, Southern Valley, we do have a chance for some a couple of times during the daytime hours of some rain showers popping up. Where we get more sun, that's where temperatures will be into the 70s. So this is how that will play out here. By the noon hour, some clouds across much of the valley, a few areas of rain showers should be pretty light during the morning after that 
round that we're seeing up north starts to fizzle out a bit. And then it's the afternoon, a little bit of sun in the south, up to the north, more cloudy with some 60s there, and a few showers, maybe even thunder showers, uh, continuing into the evening hours tonight. Things do quiet down, though, as we get into the later parts of the uh, forecast here as this moves its way on out and will clear out and wake up to some quieter weather for tomorrow. Let's check in with Al for a traffic update. Peace. We're back out on uh, Interstate 94 this morning, just working our way through the Moorhead work zone. Traffic out here is, we'll put it in the steady to moderate category, particularly westbound, eastbound, not quite so much. Reminder for you, we have a stalled car on northbound Interstate 29, right at 19th Avenue North. No lights, no flashes, nothing like that. Make sure that you're looking out for that. Uh, again, road work on uh, 25th Street this morning. One lane in each direction because of a seal coat project going on there. Lots of other stuff going on, including some changes on the Main Avenue project in West Fargo and some uh, intersections that are opening up on 13th Avenue on the north side of, the, of that project. Lots more coming your way. We'll fill you in with more in our next traffic report in about 20 or 25 minutes or so. In the meantime, drive carefully. Al Ahmed, Valley Today Traffic. 656 and also breaking for you this morning. Firefighters are trying to pinpoint the cause of an attic fire in Holly, Minnesota. Crews were called to a home, home just north of Highway 10 just after midnight. They contained the fire to the attic of the two-story home, but did have to pull the ceiling down to get to the flames. The homeowner and two kids were in the house when the fire started, but got out safely. Officials think it may have been in the electrical fire, but they are still investigating. A North Dakota man will be spending up to 14 years in prison as part of a plea agreement on a child pornography charge. Steve Brooks pleaded guilty to possession of materials involving sexual exploitation of a minor. Police say Brooks downloaded graphic sexual images of young children. Police in Bismarck are investigating a possible sex crime involving a deputy U.S. Marshal. 29-year-old Michael Rivera is accused of laying his cell phone on the floor of a Target dressing room. The victim told authorities she was trying on a bathing suit when she noticed the phone on the floor. Well, the officer who was driving a UND police car that was stolen and wrecked last month has now been disciplined. Jake Schiller was suspended one week without pay and is being placed on a six-month probation. His unsecured patrol car was stolen and crashed near Crookston while he was investigating a report of an intoxicated person near UND. Cassandra Ellis of Missouri was charged in the incident but did not show up for her court appearance after posting bail. The obituary for former Miss North Dakota Samantha Edwards has been posted, and in it, her family says she died of natural causes. Her body was found last week at a Minneapolis home. Now, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office does not yet have an official cause of death. Edwards' funeral is set for Friday night at Onmanson Funeral Home in Grand Forks. Visitation will be the same day. We do have her obituary posted online. You can go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Well, here is the latest now on a homeless, high-risk sex offender who's been living near Lindenwood Park in South Fargo. The spot where he was setting up camp is a controlled access area, so police say he won't be able to stay there. Eugene Hansen Jr. was convicted in 2011 of luring a 16-year-old girl by computer in Cass County. Campers at Lindenwood say they had no idea he was living so close. Fargo police say if sex offenders aren't breaking the law, they can't tell them where they can and cannot live. The University of North Dakota is set to reveal its brand new athletic team logo today as Ed Schaefer's, Ed Schaefer's term as the school's interim president comes to an end. The announcement, along with the announcement of the school's new nickname of Fighting Hawks, should put the finishing touches on years of controversy over the school's nickname. Schaefer says with budget problems resolved and the other controversial issues out of the way, UND's new president, Mark Kennedy, will be able to concentrate on running the university. A local animal shelter says it's been taking in more injured cats than normal, and it's costing them thousands of dollars in vet bills. In the past couple of days, Cat's Cradle has had to rescue multiple cats who got hit by cars. Now, they want to remind people it is illegal to let cats wander, and police say you can get a ticket if you're caught doing that. You can also get a hefty bill from the pound. Well, here's a story guaranteed to make your mouth water this morning. Of course, some of the best food is fair food. And as always, there are new innovations coming to the Minnesota State Fair this year. They unveiled more than a two dozen new food items yesterday. That includes macaroni and cheese, cheese curds, French onion monkey bread, sheep dogs, barbecued shrimp tacos, and many more delicious items. The fair runs August 25th through Labor Day. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning. 28% of people have hit this with their car. The answer is 
the mailbox. Oops. Remember, you can take part in our question of the morning at our Valley News Live Facebook page. It looks like some showers today. Temperatures 60s north, 70s south. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everyone.